Good day and thank you for joining us. So in today's lesson what we'll be looking at is the theorem of Pythagoras. So if you can remember from last year, um, the theorem of Pythagoras in words is the square on the hypotenuse. So we remember the hypotenuse as this side over here, right? The longer side of our triangle and opposite the right angle, okay? So that will be our longer side of the triangle and opposite the right angle. So the theorem says the square on the hypotenuse, so I'm just going to write it as I say it. So the hypotenuse here is the line AC. So the square of the hypotenuse, so AC squared, is equal to, um, so it says the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So the sum of the squares, so it's going to be an addition, right, of the sum of the other two sides, so it's going to be AB squared and BC squared, okay? So what's happening here is that the, the square of this side and the square of this side is being added to get the square of the hypotenuse, okay? So that's just the basic theorem there. And then for certain situations where They'll give you the size of the different sides and they'll say work out whether this is a right angle triangle. So basically what you got to know about that is, let me just put this in here. If, so it's going to be point number one. If AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. So that's like when they ask you to work out whether this right angle triangle, you'll work out the sum of line for example now line a b and b c so you're going to work out the sum of the lines that are not the hypotenuse and then you're going to see if they equal to the same size as the hypotenuse if they do then triangle a b c is a right angle triangle okay So I'm just going to fit it in. So then ABC is a right angle triangle. If AC squared is less than AB squared plus BC squared. So now this is again, you're working out the, the square of these two lines and you're adding them together. If they are, if this sum over here is more than AC, then triangle ABC is an acute angled triangle. Cool. And then obviously, if AC squared is more than AB squared plus BC squared, then triangle ABC is an obtuse angled triangle. So just repeating one more time. So in these situations, they say work out which type of triangle it is. You're going to find the sum of the two squares here, of the other two sides. And if it equals to the um, AC squared or the hypotenuse, then you know it's right angled. If it's more than the hypotenuse, then it's acute angled. And if it's less than the hypotenuse, then it is a obtuse angle. So just to try and refresh your memories on some, sorry, my bad. I think we meant to be here, uh, sorry. To refresh your memory on the law of Pythagoras, the theorem of Pythagoras, we're going to be just looking at some simple examples and we're going to move on to the more complicated examples which you saw on the next slide. So. Straight away, let's just look at this. So we can see that we're given this right angle triangle clearly displayed here by the right angle inside. And they give us the size of two of these sides and the side that they do not give us is our hypotenuse. So what does that mean? We can follow the law of Pythagoras as simple as it is. So we'll just put down the law quickly with the theorem. It's AC squared is equal to AB squared plus B, C squared. So straight away what we need to do is now work it out. So 
we don't have AC squared, so we'll just write that down. So AB, line AB is equal to 3. So that's 3 squared plus 4 squared for line BC. So we'll have AC squared now is equal to 3 squared is 9 plus 16, <coughs> which is the square of 4. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have AC squared over here is equal to, so we add these two together, we get 25. So now we have to get AC by itself because it has that square. And the way we get rid of a square is with a square root. So that will cancel there. And we're left with AC is equal to square root 25, which will give me 5. And our final answer can then go in right over there. Moving on here to number 2. As you can see, again we are given two sides, right? So they don't actually give... They do. I just forgot to put in the letters here. This is going to be triangle ABC. So they give us one of the sides plus the hypotenuse. Okay, we know it's the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. The right angle, I mean. And because we're given the hypotenuse and one of the other sides, we have a side missing, right? And that's not the hypotenuse. So obviously, our equation is going to change. So initially, our 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 equation would look like AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared. But as you know, what we are missing right now is our BC squared. So because we're trying to work it out, we're going to get that left by itself, okay? So to get a BC by itself, what's going to happen is we're going to have, let me just grab another color quickly, AB squared coming over, okay? But because I'm making BC the subject of my equation, I want to keep it on the left side. So it's going to be BC squared. So now AC squared still remains on the same side. So it stays a positive. Now AB comes over, okay? So it's going to be minus AB squared. Cool, so all we've done is we took the AB squared over and became negative. So now we can work it out, right? So we have BC squared, which we do not have. Then we have AC squared. AC squared is going to give me 13 squared minus 12 squared, right? So now what we need to do is go about calculating it. So we get BC squared over here. So now working out 13 squared, we'll get 169 minus 12 squared, which is 144. So we're left with BC squared is equal to 160 minus 144 is going to give me 25. And as we did before, we're going to square root to get rid of the square. So BC is left by itself and we're left with 5. Cool. So then obviously BC over there, we can just fill in that is equal to 5. So now we're done revising. So what we can do is we can head over to some more complicated examples, more of what you can expect to see in your papers, okay? So looking at this example, straight away we can see what they want us to do is work out the size of X, okay? So X is going to be this line in the middle of here, BD. So which means we just have to work out the hypotenuse for any one of these triangles. But now, first thing you're going to see is that we only get given two sides, right? But let's see, in this triangle we only have one side. And in this triangle, we also only have one side. So we're missing side. So what we need, usually need to do in this case is look at the bigger picture, right? We can see these two triangles are together forming a rectangle. The reason why we know it's a rectangle is because it's formed by two right angle triangles. So we have a right angle here. We have a right angle there also. So because those are right angles, we know that these are all parallel around, right? And they are the same length, okay? So this rectangle will tell us that this is equal to 8 as well, and this is also equal to 15 over there. So now all we need to do is work out the sizes, okay? So I'm going to choose this triangle here at the bottom, which is triangle BDC, we'll call it. So we'll say that B, sorry, we try and work out the hypotenuse, my bad. So it's going to be BD squared is equal to bc squared plus dc squared. Cool. 
So now we can work it out. We do not have BD, so we'll leave that BD squared. Then we're going to have BC squared, which is 15 squared plus 8 squared. So now we're going to get BD squared is equal to, so 15 squared is going to give me 225 plus 8 squared, which is going to give me 64. So BD squared is going to give me 289. So what we're going to do now is, as you know, square root, get BD by itself. Square root of 289, once you work that out, you'll get final answer of 17. So we know BD is X, so we can say therefore X is equal to 17. This is a very important step over here because they asked you initially to work out X. So you can't just say that BD is your final answer. You have to say that X is equal to 17 because that's what they asked you to work out and they're going to be looking for that. Okay, now moving on to what I think, believe is our last example. So, looking at this example here, we can see that in this example, there are exactly two triangles, right? So, we have a slightly larger triangle. So, let me just highlight that. Sorry. So, a larger triangle over there. And then obviously, I'm just get another color. Um, let's say this one over here. And then we have this smaller triangle here in the front. Okay, so let's look at the situation. They want us to find the size of this X over here. But what we get given in this example is this 8 over here, this 17 over here, this 25. So Looking at this triangle, the one here in front, we get given two sides, but they need us to work out x, but we do not necessarily have a way for working out x over here, because this isn't the right angle triangle, we can't use the theorem of Pythagoras. But if we come here to the left hand side, we have a right angle triangle, and we have the size of two of these sides. So you can see, this right angle triangle, I can cut into a smaller one here in, at the back as well. So the smaller one, as a base length of 8, so that is from year to year, because obviously from this point to this point would be x, so from year to year it's 8, and from year to year it is 17. So what I need to do now is work out the size of AB. The reason I'm going to work out the size of AB is because if I work out the size of AB, I already have the size of AD, which means I can work out what the size of BC is and then find the difference which would be x right and if you don't understand what i've just said you're going to see when we are working out what exactly we are doing okay so we're working out line a b so we'll say a b squared is equal to b c squared plus a c squared so now we can work this out we leave a b squared as is because we do not know what that is then we say b c squared is 8 squared plus a c squared which is 17 squared my bad, sorry, um, AB is not the hypotenuse, so what we need to do is make AB the, sum, the subject of our equation, so this equation up here is wrong as well. So initially the equation would actually read AC squared is equal to AB squared plus BC squared, right? What we need to do is make this side the subject of our equation because we're trying to work out for a side that is not the hypotenuse which is a b over here so we're going to say a b squared is equal to a c squared minus b c squared so all we've done is we took the b c over and made it negative right so here's the b c as negative a b squared is going to be equal to so a c which is 17 squared minus 8 squared So, 17 squared is going to be equal to 289 minus 8 squared, which is going to be equal to 64. So, now we'll get AB squared. We know in this step we'll be 
square rooting, so I'll put that there so long. So we're gonna have 289 minus 64, which is gonna give me 225. Sorry, we don't need that anymore. Let me just get rid of that. So we square rooted AB squared, so we'll just be left with AB, and then the square root of 225 is gonna give me 15. So therefore we can just put that in right over there. So now that we have the length of this side, we need to find out the size of x, right? So we have to use the theorem of Pythagoras once again, because right now we have the hypotenuse over here of the whole triangle. We have this 15 over here now. Now we need the size of this base so that we can minus 8 from the size of the base to get what's left over, which is x. So straight away, let's do that. So we'll say ad squared, which is our hypotenuse, is equal to Fifth, um, sorry, I'm just going to say AB squared plus BD squared. So we're trying to find the size of BD. So we're going to make BD the subject of our equation. So we'll have AD squared minus AB squared, right? So we only took the AB over and became negative. BD squared is equal to, so the size of AD is 25. So it's 25 squared minus AB squared which is going to be 15 squared. Remember, AB is the side that we worked out initially. So now we're going to have BD squared is equal to 625, that's this, 25 squared minus 225. Sorry, it's already been squared. So now we'll be left with BD squared is equal to, so that's 625 minus 225 which gives me an answer of 400 so now we need to square root and once you square root 400 we'll get a final answer of 20 so just like that we found the length of this whole bottom side okay so this whole line over here at the bottom that is going to be equal to 25 but what we have here is no, sorry, it's going to be equal to 20, my bad. It's going to be equal to 20. And what we have here is 8, right? And x, which both equal to 20. So what we need to do, obviously, then is say that x plus 8 is going to be equal to 20. So that's just the basic equation. And then we're going to solve for x. We get x is equal to 20 minus 8. So x is equal to 12. So that is going to do it for today's lesson. Hopefully this made sense. This is just uh, the level of questions that you can definitely expect to see in your tests and exams. So I hope it does, you guys can understand. If not, try and watch it back once again. Try and follow a bit better. And yeah, thank you for joining us for today's video.